Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where, as always, I talk about home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, first things first, no beer today. I had a bit of a shaving mishap this morning where I forgot to put on the adapter at some point as my head was in the clouds and I went zzz, and then that was pretty much it. I had to take the thing off. Second, if you're an audio engineer, a mixing engineer, recording engineer, working from your home studio and you want to improve the sound, the acoustics, if you're in the process of upgrading your acoustics and you want to make sure you're doing the right thing at the right time and you're focusing on what actually matters, I want you to download my home studio treatment framework, which you can download at the link in the description. It's basically my process that I go through step by step from start to finish to treat a home studio with each step building on the one before so that you are really getting everything out of all the things that you can do to treat your studio, but you're doing them at the right time so that they all work together, all these things, all these steps that you can potentially take, right? So obviously speaker placement and listener placement, but also treatment with porous absorption, when to tie in a subwoofer, when to think about resonance absorption versus just porous absorbers, bass trapping, speaker decoupling, at what point it makes sense to think about measurements and how to use them. So again, it's my home studio treatment framework that you can download at the link in the description. And if you're an audio engineer working from home, I definitely want you to check it out because in my opinion, it is the most logical way to approach treating a room and really get everything out of your room and your speakers. But so let's get into this week's video. And what I want to talk to you about today is where to place the door in your studio, or rather where the best place is to place the door in your studio. And first of all, a huge caveat, obviously, if you are working from a home studio and you're kind of just turning a spare bedroom, your attic, your basement into your studio, and you're not really building from scratch, usually you don't really have an option to decide where to put the door. And in my opinion, the door placement isn't the most crucial thing in the world. The doors, like the windows, they're, they're, it's, it's going to be where it's going to be, and you're just going to have to deal with it. It's not the end of the world if that means that you can't, for example, place certain absorbers in a corner because the door is in a corner, or if uh, it's just in an inconvenient spot, or if you've got multiple doors. You just have to work with what you've got. You've got to make the best of what you've got, and it's okay to make compromises, right? Acoustics, just like mixing a record, is a lot of little steps that you take in the right direction. And if you're missing out on one of those steps at some point, it's not the end of the world. It's not going to break the end result in the same way that if you're mixing a record and you're work working with suboptimal uh, stems, suboptimal material, it's not recorded perfectly, it's not the end of the world. You can still do a great mix. Sure, the kind of the the ceiling of how far you can take that isn't as great as what you could do if you started off with really great material, but you can still do a good job. You can still get it to work. And it's the same with the acoustics in your room, right? So never get hung up on these things. If there are certain things that you can't do because it's just not worth obsessing over and, and getting really upset and thinking it's going to break the whole thing, you can still do a lot of good things, you can still take a lot of the right steps to improve the sound in your room. So focus on that, right? But let's think about this now in an ideal world, let's say you're starting from scratch, building a room, or you just want to kind of know what the impact is of the door being where it is. Let's think about some kind of ground rules, some basic, some basic concepts to understand what we want to achieve by having the door in the right place or not. Yeah, And I think there are really only two kind of ground rules, kind of basic ideas to, to keep in mind when you're thinking about the door placement. The first one is that with all things stereo sound in a studio, you want things to be symmetrical. The, the, the more symmetrical the room is on that center axis between your speakers front to back, so that the left and the right speaker basically see a mirror image of the other speaker, the, the more stable, the more balanced, uh, the more, yeah, 
equal, I'm not sure what the better word is, the the stereo image is going to be, the response from your speakers is going to be um, in, and and that's, that's going to have a, a positive impact, a, uh, it's going to have the best possible impact on the stereo image that you're getting from your speakers. So in that sense, the, the obvious place for your door is going to be on that center axis, either in the front or in the back, right? Because that's what's going to make the room symmetrical. So I'm not sure if you can see it here in my room, but there's in the image just in the corner, you can see the, the door handle of my door and my door is basically right in the middle of the back wall in my room. And it doesn't really make sense to have the, the door in the front, even though that is to, in terms of symmetry an option, because there's so much happening in terms of reflection, as we'll look at in a second, in the front of the room, that uh, you don't really want to block the option to treat parts of the front of the room around your speakers because you're ha you have a door there, all right? At least in a home studio scenario, all right, where you really need to work with speaker placement and lis listener space placement uh, to the best of your ability. Yeah, so this doesn't really apply to really high-end studios where you might flush mount the speakers in the front wall, for example, because then you can you can actually put the door in the middle of the speakers in the front wall because there's not really much happening there. But in your home studio where you have your speakers placed on speaker stands at some, some distance from the side walls and the front wall, uh, there's so much happening in terms of reflections that you don't really want to lose that opportunity to do treatment there because you have the door there, right? So those are kind of the two rules, right? So keep your symmetry if possible and don't waste or don't block an opportunity to deal with reflections. So let's have a look at that, right? So here's I've, here's an example of a, a very simple floor plan of a room, right? The square box here is just kind of the outer four walls of the room. We're looking down at it. By the way, this tool is the Amray Ray Tracing Sketch Pad, which is a great tool to mess around with, as you'll see in a second, and I'll link it as well in the description. And what I've got here is the, these four walls. I've got a speaker placed somewhere in the room. I'm just gonna kind of try and get a, a, a something that resembles an equilateral triangle here with the speaker placement. We've got our the listener placed symmetrically between left and right, right on this on the center axis of the room. And I've set this up to only show us first order reflections, which are basically early reflections. Okay. And so what we can see now is where these reflections would happen on all these walls, if our speakers and our listener are placed like that, right. And already we can see obviously, we've got our, our reflections on the front wall on the side walls on the back wall. And if you look at this, the reflection on the back wall actually happens almost in the middle of the room. Yeah, so this is something where ideally you would say, well, maybe then that placing the door there isn't a great option. Yeah, because the reflection happens happens there. In my opinion, this isn't too much of a problem, as long as the, the back wall has some distance to your listening position, because that reflection is going to be delayed by quite some time. You actually you can actually see it down here. It tells that that this tells us that this reflection is delayed by roughly 23 milliseconds, right? So it's it's just outside what you might consider kind of the 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 air, the the time frame in which early reflections happen. It's also going to be lower in volume because it has to travel further. So that impact of that reflection isn't as high, right? So that's why you 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 might want to put put your door right in the middle. Uh, of the of the the center axis of your room on the back wall, but uh, an even better idea might be to put it on the side wall in the back of the room, right? Because there's really not much happening on those side walls in the back of the room. Yeah, so we're breaking symmetry at that point. But hey, at least we can now use the whole back wall for treatment, right? And even if we increase the order reflection order to two. So now we've not only got reflections bouncing off of one surface, we've got reflections bouncing off of two surfaces. Yeah, we can see that for this one speaker, there is obviously a reflection happening sort of in the back 
on the side wall on the side of that speaker, but the other side is kind of free, if you will. See, so if we place the speaker there, that whole idea is gonna, whoops, that's the listening position. If we place the speaker, if we look at the other speaker in this scenario, this is obviously gonna be mirrored. So it, it, I, it doesn't really, there's really no, there's, it's always a compromise, right? There is no best case scenario here. Um, and obviously, if you move the speakers around, if you end up with a situation where the speaker is really close to the front wall, you can see how those reflections move. And then there's always going to be a, a compromise here. You're never going to you're never going to find that perfect place for the door. But in general, it's going to be somewhere in the back of the room. Yeah, in my opinion, the best place is going to be somewhere on the side walls, because that's where kind of the the least important reflections happen. In, in a typical square stereo st square room stereo setup, okay? Now, one more thing actually, now that I think of it, is you don't really want the, the door in a corner. As you can see here, corner reflections are kind of a nasty, nasty thing. They tend to reflect sound right back in the same direction where it came from. And I actually consider these first order reflections, even though, even though they bounce off of two surfaces but i found at least uh, these two to sometimes be very prominent in in measurements so they they to, to me they count kind of as as first order reflections so it's it's fairly important to treat corners for reflection control as well as base control right we know that it's a corners are a great place to put base traps so we really want the corners to be free of any of anything that that will keep us from putting treatment there right so again that's why it makes sense to either put the door sort of some way somewhere in the last third of the room on the side walls where we still have plenty of space to treat corners for reflection control and base trapping or to have it kind of in the center of the the back wall right in the middle on that center axis so that we can keep symmetry and then our kind of our best option is to to treat around the door and and do the, uh, the best that we can with the surface of the door usually that means just leaving it blank leaving it open maybe you'll you, you'll put a, a very simple smaller absorber there uh, just to kind of make sure that 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 surface is broken up a little bit but that's kind of the the compromise that you the only compromise that you can make. But so those are I guess the 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 three three rules in the end to consider, right? Ideally keep symmetry in the room with doors and windows both uh, and uh, that means usually having it on the center axis in the back of the room because you want to keep the front of the room free of, of things stopping you from treatment. As you can see here, there's lots of reflections happening in the front of the room. So you wanna have the option to treat the room there. And in my opinion, uh, an even better place in a typical home studio would be on the side wall because that way you can uh, you can use the on, the, on the side wall in the last third of the room because that way you can you can use the entire back back wall for treatment if you, if you want to. And uh, the, in my opinion, the kind of the least important reflections really happen here on the side walls in the back of the room, even though reflections will happen there as well, depending on your exact speaker and listener placement, right? So that's kind of why, how I think about door placement in a room, ideally in the back, either in the center or on the last third of the room. It doesn't really matter which side. Again, don't obsess about this though, right? If, you're, if the, the door you have in your room is in a corner and you can't treat that corner for that reason, so be it. There are plenty of other corners that you can treat. And if it's in the front of the room, same, it's not ideal. Do the best you can with what you got. Maybe use some some mobile panels on, on, on floor stands, on wheels that you can move around so that you can, if you need to really have kind of the, if you really need some uh, the opportunity for critical listening, you can move that that panel, that sort of gobo in front of the door and get that symmetrical treatment happening again. So those those are kind of the, the rules to follow. Again, if you are thinking about treating your room, if you are in the process of treating your room and you're a bit confused about what to do at which point and what point to think about measurements, what point to think about the, the right type of treatment, 
uh, if you if you're thinking about getting a subwoofer and you, you're not sure if if that's the right solution for the problems you have in in with the low end for example make sure you download the home studio treatment framework which will tell you exactly in which order to work through all the different steps that are part of treating a room so that you make sure they all kind of build on each other they're not they're not working against each other so you're not tur turning in circles as you're treating your room so all right that's it for now i hope that answers the question about the door placement i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching